Tim is a UK-based advertising photographer who started his career shooting editorial for magazines including the Sunday Times, GQ, Telegraph magazines and Tatler. Over the years, Tim has received a huge amount of recognition uh, for both his commercial and personal work, with much coming from the AOP and communication arts, as well as appearing in the Graphis <coughs> Photography Annual and Lertz's Archive. Other awards have come from International Photography, Schweppes Portrait, and International Portrait Competitions. Welcome to the stage, Tim. It takes me, it seems like an eternity to kind of go through the ideas, work them all out, and then get round to shooting them. And most of the time they kind of discount, I discount the ideas and throw them out and I have to start all over again. Anyway, I um, just want to share this beautiful picture of me. Young, innocent, fresh-faced, eager to be a photographer. Um, i just done a year's foundation art course um, and I had a, basically I was a lousy painter um, but I had a, an amazing tutor who um, inspired me in photography. Um, he was actually a photographer living on Dartmoor and um, just photographed local people and just started teaching. Um, and he just had this way. And I, I didn't really know anything about photography, never interested it at all. And suddenly he showed me these images on slideshows. And it just kind of blew me away, really. Um, photographers like Brassai, who uh, photographed Paris by night. Just these weird and wonderful images of sewers, prostitutes, kind of seedy life that perhaps living in uh, or brought up in Devon that I'd never experienced. Um, uh, Arnold Newman, who's an amazing uh, American photographer, portrait photographer, did a lot of work with portraits of artists. Again, black and white. Um, also the classic kind of magnum photographers, Cartier-Bresson, people like that. It, just, it was just suddenly, wow, this is incredible. Uh, you know, I'm really involved in it. Um, the only thing is I didn't think I could actually make a career out of it. I thought it was kind of a, a dream, but it wasn't possible to actually, you know, earn some money. Um, another photographer he showed to me was Helmut Newton. And um, again, maybe it's this kind of seedier side that I liked. I mean, I've got this, got this warped personality, attracted towards it. Um, but also the, the humour, I think, it was something that interested me. Um, I'm just going to show a few, basically, a few personal <laughs> projects that I've worked on um, and hopefully some ideas behind them. Um, first one, um, which is furniture jockey. Basically, I think a lot of photographers like to be very independent, they're very single minded. Um, they kind of want to work their way or no way. Obviously, you know, in a commercial way, you have to work with an art director. But actually, I like working in collaboration with people. It's quite interesting to share ideas. Um, and I worked on this personal project with a fantastically talented art director, Lee Coventry. Um, and the original inspiration came from um, a, a commercial, which I think was for a telecoms commercial, where it was people in a living room and they were building a giant telephone out of cushions. I thought, that's so cool. It's like an amazing, fun kind of thing. And I started thinking about my childhood, about um, all the times that I used to create little worlds in my bedroom, castles and stuff like that. And then I also saw uh, the film, uh, Michel Gondry's film, um, this one here, which uh, this just incredible kind of handmade creative world, uh, which really inspired. And so decided to do a kind of series with children in their own little kind of worlds that they're, they're built, basically. Um, <clears throat> so... The idea was to make it quite crafted. I didn't want it to be kind of really perfect, sort of CGI. It needed to be something that perhaps the kids could have made themselves. Um, element of fun, obviously, and imagination was the kind of key things. So we need to find a house to shoot in. Um, and uh, we, my team kind of went around and looked for casts from kids. And I guess the most important thing was to need to be, have an element of believability in it. Um, I wanted to believe that the kids were actually really immersed in their kind of imaginative world and having fun. Um, so we found an acting school, 
um, and did a casting there, and, and the kids were really amazing. Um, we had a stylist on board, but I have to say I'm quite sad. I kind of like doing all the little bits. I guess I'm still a child at heart. Um, so I like constructing all these worlds. Um, I did a whole bunch of tests beforehand, um, particularly with the previous one with a motorbike. Um, so I spent days searching around the house, trying to find objects and bits and pieces and stick them all together and see if I can come up with anything. So yes, this was fun, um, <laughs> trying to create the, the wave. Um, I, I guess, researched a lot of pictures to start with of people doing things like boys surfing or kids, um, people surfing, um, and then use those images to kind of create uh, a background that looked semi-realistic, but also had a kind of uh, a crafted look to it. Um, so this is the next project I worked on, um, Social Network. I'm a massive movie fan, um, and I'm trying to remember the name of this bloody film, and I can't actually remember. <laughs> um, it's a movie that I've watched a million times, and it should be on here, but it's not. Um, and I guess it's just something that's in me, it's a spark in me, it's just there's this family living in this big house and they start inviting all their friends to come and live it with them in this kind of eccentric world and I love this idea of sharing like a kind of extreme flat share so um, I decided I want to do a kind of project like that and take it probably one step further so really what I was after was the right house to shoot it in um, so I kind of scoured for locations and I found this amazing house um, in Essex. It was like a sort of stately home. 85-year-old um, woman living in a 30-bedroomed house that hadn't changed for 50 years. It was quite extraordinary. Um, so we basically went down there, um, shot over two days, stayed there. She allowed us to stay there with the crew. Um, we cast a whole bunch of actors to come in and uh, play the parts. Um, and it was actually amazing. It was an amazing experience. There was actually this real kind of friendship and sharing kind of thing that went on, even though obviously my object was to come away with some great pictures. Um, one thing on this one particularly was that um, I got everyone to read their books out loud at the same time. And it was this just amazing kind of sound, this cacophony of noise, which I wish what I have, uh, would have videoed. It would have uh, been quite extraordinary. So, getting a whole bunch of uh, models into a bathroom, squashed them in there, which had its own difficulties. Um, one of the girls, um, it was so hot in there, um, she nearly passed out and kind of rushed past me, knocking me and the camera flying. So that was one uh, tricky moment. Um, and then the stylist had to keep on going in there to lather up all the bodies, uh, which is a really tough job. <laughs> Um, again, I, I think the important thing, I, I wanted to get a, a feeling of reality to it, even though it's obviously kind of accentuated. Um, so I didn't really want to do any comping or CGI, so try to do you know, everything as much as possible in camera. Um, but again, I think that, you know, that, that there was just such a good feeling amongst all the people there, that, that there was just a natural... You know, they were just naturally messing around in the kitchen as though they were having their breakfast in the morning. So it was kind of easy in, in one sense. So the next, moving on to the next project, um, obsession. I guess I'm a bit obsessed um, one way or another. Um, I came across this when I was sort of... When I'm looking for, or thinking about a project, I tend to scour everything from looking at movies, looking uh, on the web, and um, I came, came across this image, which I just, I'm not sure who the photographer was, but just really, I really liked it. I guess there's a, you know, a crafting element, which um, I'm obviously into in a, in a bad way, um, but also I played in a band for many years, so I guess it was the rock and roll thing, I've got a massive collection of instruments at home 
drums and guitars and amps and God knows what. And so I guess I related to this. So I started thinking, oh, how can I kind of um, incorporate this into a kind of portrait? Um, and so the obsession idea came, um, but how could this actually visually transfer itself? And then I don't know how I came up with the idea of, of making the hairstyle their obsession. So the hairstyle would basically relate to their whatever their obsession is, whether it be musical instruments or gardening or whatever. Um, so the first port of call really was looking at hairstyles and trying to, from a particular hairstyle, was to link a, an obsession and, um, and tag it together and then come up with the, the idea. So um, my stylist scoured the... Uh, second-hand markets for retro um, gaming consoles for this one. Um, again, we did, went through a kind of casting process. Um, I wanted it just fairly simple in terms of styling. I think the, the I've always kind of thought that the less is more, in a sense, that don't go, if you've got something very busy, i.e. all the objects in their hair, um, everything else needs to be a little bit more simple, really. Otherwise, it just, it kind of overawes the whole viewer. Um, the, the way we did this was um, basically I used a, a mannequin and we kind of stuck the objects to the mannequin which was on set in the studio and it was in the same position as the, um, the people, the models that we shot. So we kind of got, the, we kind of shot the people, found a position that we were happy with and then did the mannequin afterwards. Um, so we spent hours, if not days, um, blue tacking toy cars to a mannequin's head, which is seriously worrying, I think. Um, this is my huge collection of instruments. Um, with this one, obviously, we couldn't stick all the instruments on a mannequin. Um, slightly too big so um, I was keen to try and because it this could easily look really CGI'd so built actually a 30-foot sculpture uh, in a studio with all these instruments and and had a kind of curved base that they would be on um, just to try and make it as realistic as possible um, to kind of recreate the afro style of the hair Um, the last one in the series, I think, it, I guess it's, um, when I was thinking about this one, I guess I was thinking kind of like a old master painting, particularly in the pose of the model. Um, and I love the idea of just this kind of almost plaits of doll's furniture hanging down. Next project, a um, little bit different. I was working in um, Amsterdam and I went to see uh, Ronika Diestra, if that's the correct pronunciation of her, um, exhibition. And there was, a, she had this video installation, which was amazing. Um, it really blew me away. And it was, I think she shot it in a nightclub. I'm not sure where, um, but it was just videos of, with real hardcore kind of uh, dance music and these teenagers just off their head on drugs, dancing, frenetically, kissing each other, very straight camera. And I just thought, wow, that's just so striking. Um, it really struck a chord. So what I wanted to do was something similar. I wanted to do something real, in a sense, um, try and f capture people in the middle of their dancing. Um, which is going to be a difficult thing to do. A friend of mine was from Kosovo originally, and um, I don't know, in talking about the project, he said, oh, you should go to Kosovo, because there's some really strange clubs there, and it would be really interesting. <laughs> Good idea, I don't think so. Anyway, so I went out there and recce'd, and I found this amazing club, and what was refreshing about it was that the, the, you know, the, the kids who were going there just wore the most bizarre clothes. That was the thing. It was not your stereotypical kind of European or even worldwide um, clothing wear. They were wearing really unusual sort of retro clothes. Um, and it was packed, this place. And I spoke to the nightclub owner, and it was like, yeah, you can come back and shoot. Not a problem, not a problem. 
So I set it all up, went back out there with assistance, lighting, went to do it, set up, and then we had a call from the mafia. <laughs> Basically smashed my cameras and told me to get out, otherwise we were going to be in trouble. So um, sadly that didn't happen. So we had to think again, and I ended up going to um, a nightclub in Dorset. <laughs> Not exactly the same, but nevertheless... Pretty interesting. <laughs> so um, I wanted to try and catch, a, you know, as much as I could, um, you know, a believable, real um, point in time. Um, bizarrely, when I was at uh, college, I, you know, tried being like Cartier-Bresson, trying to capture the decisive moment, and was always totally crap at it. So from then on, it was always. I have to brainstorm ideas, I have to think about them, I have to do tests, and then I will actually do the thing. But this was kind of slightly uh, taking me out of uh, my comfort zone. So what we did, there was a nightclub and they had a smaller dance area, and we kind of set up like a little hide. It basically blacked out um, a section which I would be in with a hole for the camera, I'd go inside it, and then had two assistants who would go into the dance and in other dance area and invite people to come up and dance in this area. And we had set up all the flash, which was all strategically placed, so it was the lighting was going to be exactly how I wanted it to be. Absolutely madness. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, it, it worked to a certain degree, I think. <laughs> um, it was very voyeuristic, I have to say. I felt really weird <laughs> in this sort of blacked out tent with these people dancing in front of me with no kind of contact. Um, but interesting. It was an interesting experience. And I guess, you know, um, the thing about being a, a people photographer is, is your experiences with other people. Um, that's something that interests me. And um, I guess with this, uh, it's something that um, made it interesting. Um, actually, I didn't like the floor. <laughs> there was a white wall uh, behind, but the floor I didn't like, so I deliberately cropped it out. I really want to go back to that club in Kosovo again. <laughs> so, on the point of um, talking about voyeurism, the next project um, is pretty voyeuristic. <laughs> um, I came across a uh, advertising campaign for Coco de Mer. Um, Frank Budgen, I think his name was, who's the uh, photographer, who's actually a famous director, I'm sure you know. Um, anyway, he did these um, shots of uh, real people having orgasms um, in their kind of natural environment. And again, I saw them and just, just thought, wow, God, they are just incredible. Um, what if you take these people out of their normal everyday environment that they're doing their stuff in and put it in a studio and light them as though, you know, basically the viewer doesn't really know what's going on. Um, so that's what I decided to do, um, foolhardy as it was. So, yeah, so how do you go to do stuff like this? I'm not quite sure. I'm not really, <laughs> uh, I'm quite a shy person. So um, I, a producer friend of mine put an advert in Gumtree. Um, <laughs> where else do you find these people? <laughs> um, she also uh, approached some um, swingers groups who apparently all turned around and said, how disgusting. <laughs> Why would you want to do such a thing? Anyway, uh, we had a massive response from Gumtree. I was really surprised. Um, and... On, on looking at the, the shots that people sent through, um, we, we advertised it as an art project, um, <laughs> nothing seedy, um, and um, I thought they would all be, you know, budding young kind of porn stars or something, but in fact, that wasn't the case at all. It was people who were just interested in the idea, um, interested in the project, thought it was something exciting. Maybe none of them, I don't think, had ever done anything like it before. So, what I did was, once we'd kind of talked to the people, told them what it was all about, uh, and then chosen them, um, we set up 
uh, in a studio. And, and the, the first, I did basically did four in one go, as it were. Uh, two couples. And the real tricky part about it was that um, the lighting is very specific. In other words, the way I try and light it is that literally you've got a, a mark, and then if you move like half a foot to the left, the, the lighting shit. So you can't move, basically. So we have a chair, you can't move. Uh, I'm not going to go into grisly details here, but um, anyway, the long and short of it was that um, you know we I talked it through a lot before we actually did the shot, and um, when we did it, uh, it was just the most horrific thing I've ever done in my life. I have to say, <laughs> it was painful, absolutely painful. But I mean, the results I think are quite strong. Um, but after I'd done the first four, I decided that it was just too much information that I'm seeing here. So. A bit like the, the dancing um, shoot, I basically blacked off the whole area and I just had a hole for the camera so I could just see their head and shoulders. And it was much better. But the, yeah, the, the difficulty was, as I said to them, as I said to them before, you've got to tell me when you're going to come. <laughs> and uh, obviously, in, you know, they're probably a little bit concerned how they're in, sitting in a horrible studio with a seat gaffer taped to the floor, lights everywhere, black cloth with this kind of hole facing them. It's not very sexy. So for them to actually perform <laughs> one way or another is quite a tall order, really. But um, they did, mostly. <laughs> uh, some didn't, but anyway. Um, so I, I did it over a period of time. Uh, because, as I say, it, it, I had to say, it's just, yeah, it was the most difficult thing I have ever done in my life. Um, in fact, a little bit upset because there's a film coming out. I don't know if anyone's seen it. Lars von Trier has just um, done a whole load of still shoots. Kind of a bit similar. Uh, but... But actually, you know, as I say, most of these, all, in fact, all of these people had never done anything like it before. Um, and they all seem kind of really enthusiastic. And they really want to have the picture afterwards. You know, the part of it was that I would pay a very minuscule fee and they could have a print. And they were desperately keen to have the picture. I'm surprised there's not more questions about this one. Ah, <laughs> they are mostly uh, with a uh, a partner um, <laughs> who's doing the who's doing the stuff. Yeah. So calming it all down. <laughs> My last project um, I've got here. Um, most recent thing I've done actually. Um, Two becomes one, which. <laughs> Um, I wanted to do something kind of going back to, I guess, my roots and what inspired me in photography, really, which is those kind of the old masters, particularly Man Ray being one of them. Um, and I wanted to do something very graphic. Um, Gilbert and George, I'd come across years before, and I worked, when I, first, when I finished um, college, I worked for this really old fashioned um, fine art photographers in Mayfair. Um, which was very inspirational, in fact. I learned all these kind of old, very old techniques, processing, film, uh, printing, large format cameras, all that kind of stuff. And I met a lot of artists there, because I used to feather off their works, including Gilbert and George. Um, and lucky enough, I, I managed to feather off a lot of the artists as well, which, was, again, was another um, link in being a portrait photographer, I suppose. Um, but I was looking back at some of their work, and I loved the sort of simplicity of the graphic nature of it. Um, so I decided to do a series of pictures. Well, so it's kind of about, um, you know, it seems now that we uh, have multiple personas. Um, you know, if we are on, um, online, we could be someone else than our, you know, 
maybe someone more exciting than we are in normal life. So I wanted to kind of incorporate that in, in these pictures as well. The, when we did the shoot, um, I had a stylist and we kind of discussed the idea of clothes and I think I got it partly wrong to start with, I think, and the way I kind of saw the project going. And then she, um, in the end, couldn't come on the shoot, so she brought her, her assistant. And they bought really not half as much clothing as I normally have. And I was just so frustrated at the time, thinking, Jesus, this really fucked this up. Um, but actually, in retrospect now, um, the simplicity, I think, um, makes it work really well. Um, in a way, it was a, it's a good job that happened. is the end. Thank you very much.